Hello everyone. Welcome to Miss Just Suggests, a video segment from the Ames Free Library. I'm Miss Just, the Youth Services Librarian here at the Ames Free Library, and every few weeks I'm going to sit down with you right here and recommend some great new reads. Every episode is something new for readers from pre-K right through middle school, so stay tuned for some good stuff. The stories we'll share in this episode are all classic children's stories, and they all make great family read alouds. Because there are too many great classic children's books just to choose three, I am going to be featuring a few well-known authors today, all of whom have at least one um, book worth sharing with your family. Many of these classic children's stories are also going to appeal to animal fans, um, um, as most of them include animals on some level, whether it's the main character or an animal companion. Um, so, um, so read alouds, classic stories, animal stories, this one is going to hopefully encompass um, an interest level for a lot of you guys out there. And because these are great family stories, um, I'm not really going to mention the interest level of each because they should appeal to multiple age groups. This is also a great time for me to remind you that you are never too old for your family to enjoy a read aloud together. Um, it might be an adult reading to you, or maybe you're testing out your reading skills, reading to your grown up, or maybe you're um, a fluent reader and you're reading to a sibling or another family member. Um, family read alouds are, are Everything about it is perfect, right? Whether you're a pre-reader or a beginning reader or an experienced reader, a preschool student, an elementary student, even a middle school student, spending time sharing a good story with people you love is a good thing. I mean, it, it doesn't get better than that, right? So ask your grown-up tonight to see if they can spend some time reading with you. First up, we're gonna be looking at a book by author Beverly Cleary. Beverly Cleary is an author that so many parents today remember from their own childhoods. She's the uh, creator of her classic character, Ramona, who entertained us, many of us, through our elementary years. Um, she would get into scrapes, whether she was, um, you know, causing a little mischief or trying to do the right thing or, you know, maybe fussing with her big sister um, or her parents. Um, she was just the perfect depiction of, she still is, a perfect depiction of, of a little girl just figuring things out. Miss Cleary is also the creator of that endearing little rodent, Ralph S. Mouse. And that mouse and his motorcycle um, kept us all reading through, uh, through those adventures in all those books in his series. So um, those are some, actually I would highly recommend you check those out, Ramona and Ralph S. Mouse. Those are some good books that have um, stood the test of time. But today we are focusing on the book Socks. So um, our titular character is indeed this adorable little cat on the cover and you can see he might be named Socks because look at those white paws. He totally looks like he's wearing some socks there, right? Um, this story is told from the cat's point of view. So you can, um, you can read about him from a little kitten in a box. They're going to give him away to finding a loving family and becoming a spoiled little pet, the center of everyone's attention, to suddenly being put aside and now he's a babysitter or a playmate or even sometimes a squishy toy for the owner's new baby, Charles William. Socks is not always a big fan of that new baby. Well, after he gets over his indignance of being displaced as the family's main priority, Socks actually realizes that being part of a bigger family is more fun. The next classic author we're gonna take a look at is Sid Fleischman. Um, Mr. Fleischman's books tend to be fantasy, or at least they run toward the fantastical kind of um, events, even if they're set in, in maybe a realistic setting. Sid Fleischman's books have, a lot of them have aged out, um, many are, are past their prime, um, but all of his books are, are full of humor, they're full of plot twists, they're full of very silly adventures. Really, what, um, what better kind of story to read aloud and share with your family than one that makes you laugh and makes you feel fun and feel good, right? So, uh, Mr. Fleischman has also written a biography about the very famous magician, Harry Houdini, and his daring escapes. So, although that one is um, a nonfiction book, it's actually a fun one to check out too, and it's, it's written with some of um, Sid Fleischman's um, characteristics um, with his humor and kind of this sense of adventure. 
Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at The Whipping Boy, The Whipping Boy by Sid Fleischman. As you can see, this is a slim book, so it's definitely a quick read, and once you get started, you might not wanna put it down. Um, Whipping Boys were actually a true piece of history. There would be a boy, kind of a commoner, who would be taken into the castle, and he would bear the punishment for the misdemeanors of royal children. Well, this is a bit of a new take on it all. Um, Jemmy is an orphan from the streets. Well, the prince whose punishments he has to take. Um, well, they call him Prince Brat for a reason. Yeah, not the most well-behaved child. Well, when Prince Brat decides that he wants to run away, Jemmy has to go with him. Prince demands, you come with me and be my servant. And Jemmy knows he can't stay or else he will be punished because the prince ran away. I mean, obviously, that's a pretty massive transgression, right? Well, once they step outside the castle, there is no turning back. You can see there's definitely going to be some narrow escapes, some scrapes. There's this big bear of a man. Um, kind of looks like he's capturing these two boys, but um, yeah, there's, there's also the big bear. So one way or another, I think they're gonna get into some mischief. Our next author is E.B. White, author of quite a few uh, classic stories. Uh, he's known for his nostalgic stories. Um, most of E.B. White's stories were written in the earlier 20th century, so they reflect um, kind of a simpler time. Um, often that does include maybe some old-fashioned concepts or vocabulary, but his really sweet, like the pure storylines remain. Um, and actually this is a great chance maybe to read together and experience some of these, maybe a turn of phrase that we don't use anymore. And, um, and kids and grown-ups, you can sit together and talk about what that means or maybe um, how we might say the same kind of thing or express that instead. Um, Almost everyone knows Charlotte's Web. That is E.B. White's most famous book, I think. Um, it's a classic farm story about Wilbur the pig and his spider companion, Charlotte, and even Fern, the little farm girl who um, she befriends all the farm creature creatures and she looks after Wilbur when he's little. Another classic story he's well known for is The Trumpet of the Swan, um, where the trumpeter swan, Lewis, um, can't, he's mute, he can't make noise like his, his siblings and, um, and his flock mates. Uh, and so what does he do about that? So uh, E.B. White is, I think, absolutely like the king of animal stories. And so today we will look at Stuart Little. And if you're not familiar, you'll see we've got another animal right at the heart of this story. This one is a little bit different. Stuart lives in New York City. So instead of being placed out in a rural farm area, um, he lives in New York City with his parents and his brother. He enjoys exercising with his brother, reading with his family, sailing boats in the park. But, oh, right, Stuart is a mouse and his family are humans. So there's a little different thing about this story here. Um, Stuart absolutely loves his family and they love him. Sometimes he gets into scrapes and sometimes he can help his family and sometimes his family needs to help him, but he also needs to find some friends of his own size. So when he does make friends with a sweet little bird named Margalo, um, well, he doesn't know that she's going to lead to his greatest adventure. So as you can see, Stuart is quite an adventurous mouse, and you can all read this one aloud together to find out more about what he gets into. I have one more classic author. We're going to put this as our bonus book, actually our bonus author for today. This is Gertrude Chandler Warner, and she is the author of The Boxcar Children. Um, these are realistic fiction, um, and also as you go through the series, they become a lot of mysteries. So these are fun for a little, um, a little suspense, mild suspense, kind of what's gonna happen next. Um, these can be great for read-alouds. You might end at the end of a chapter and say, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen, and then the next night you'll wanna pick it up and read some more. So it's usually a good sign of a good family read-aloud. So in this first book in the series, The Boxcar Children, um, it's a very classic, it's an old-fashioned, sweet kind of story about the Alden children. There's Henry, Jesse, Violet, and little Benny here. They are siblings. Um, They've been orphaned, but they don't want to go live with their grandfather. They never met him while, while their parents were alive, and, and they're not really sure they're going to like him, so they'd rather strike out on their own and, and try to, to try to survive that way. So um, this first book is about finding their place. It's about love. It's about family, about taking care of each other. And then um, once that is resolved and they find their place, 
the rest of the series really does take them on journeys and adventures and solving mysteries. So um, um, highly recommended. Each story is is unique and has some fun little twists and um, like I said, little mysteries to kind of figure out as you go along. I do have one more bonus bonus book and author to tell you about, and that is Dick King Smith. Um, Dick King Smith was actually an English farmer before he started writing, so it should come as no surprise to you that he is well known for his animal stories. Um, he's perhaps best known for Babe, the Gallant Pig, um, also known as the Sheep Pig, actually as it was originally published in Britain. The pig, Babe, befriends a sheepdog and he ends up rounding up those sheep like a pro. But the story I really wanted to tell you about today is one of his other stories. It is an animal story, but it's a different kind of animal. This book, um, which I adore, is called The Water Horse. And it looks into the origins of the Loch Ness Monster. So this great story takes us up into the Scottish Highlands where a young brother and sister, they find a really interesting looking egg sac in the water. And so somehow, maybe, oh, I don't know, a mischievous child, it ends up in the bathtub at their home. And when it hatches, it's not a fish or a shark that emerges. It's a tiny little dinosaur looking creature. Well, as you might imagine, that creature grows fast and it is not tiny for long. It certainly outgrows their bathtub. And well, as they say, the rest is history. I hope you'll swing by the library to check out these great reads. And you can feel free to call the library or shoot us an email for personalized recommendations. Check back soon to see my next video for some more suggestions. Till then, be well and read well. Hey kids, if you want to guest suggest a book here on Miss Jess Suggests, please have your grown up email me at kids at amesfreelibrary.org and we will get your recommendation on the air. I can't wait to hear what you are all reading these days. <laughs>